right, everybody. Welcome back to Versus Live. My name is Corey Ballmeister. And I'm Ross Miriam. And we got Rob in the booth. Say what's up, Rob. What's up, Rob? Rob, we'll be taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. If you want those questions sent over to us, take at Star City Games, and uh, Rob will do his best to send them over to us. All right, so we are playing a little M21 action here. Uh, the set is now fully released, so we, we, we know everything. We... We're missing some cards yesterday when we were building decks, but realistically, it was like the commons that filled out the set. So, you know, we, we built basically all the decks that we could with the set uh, over the course of three shows. And, uh, you know, we, we came up with some cool decks. I think some of them have the potential to really be breakouts. You know, we didn't play any team of reclamation with minor upgrades and stuff like that because, well, snooze fest. We have to play that in standard <laughs> constantly anyways. But, you know, those decks are going to still exist. These are kind of maybe the new shells that we want all of you to be thinking about when it comes to a new standard metagame and what could be good. Um, but now, uh, to remind everyone, now it's your turn. Let us know what decks that we missed. Uh, go to either Ross or, or myself's uh, Twitter account, and we have a tweet about um, Versus Live for Thursday. So if you want to get your deck that you have just thought looked so cool uh going into m21 uh tag at or hashtag either team Corey or team ross whoever you want to play your deck if not if you don't care who plays it fine but get your deck list out there we're gonna play all user submitted decks on thursday uh so let's see uh let's see what you got huh yeah no, it's <laughs> time for y'all to put in some work you exactly know, brewing decks for two weeks we're tired we're gonna sort of take the day off have some fun with other people's decks exactly uh, exactly we really take the day off yeah we we got the luxury of already getting to play with these cards before you so first of all nana nana boo boo <laughs> but now it's your turn to uh try out your brews and uh bring them to the versus live table for thursday so you got uh you got the rest of tonight to get those lists in uh we got to submit deck lists early in the morning and stuff like that so it's got to be tonight uh so get those in today and um now we're continuing round number two here i'm going to be playing a celestia almost proliferate deck in a sense, I, I would kind of call it more proliferate than like Selesnia tokens. You're not playing March of the Multitudes or Raise the Alarm. Yeah. You're an aggro deck with plus and most one counter synergies. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so more of a hardened scales kind of deck, you know? Yeah. I think that would be a very good, uh, you know, uh, representation of decks in the past. That it would seem like that Cedric disagrees with you, though. It is called Selesnia tokens for me. Ooh. Is there is there a card in the deck that creates tokens other than Bossery? I, I don't know. Oh, Bossery and Garrick. Garrick? Well, so both, both Planeswalkers generate tokens. I think that's it. I have. I think I might have one or two Emery's. Oh, Amara. You have Amara. So Amara. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Emery would not be very good in your deck. It would not in your be. Your Selesnya deck. You do have an artifact, though. You can. You can. That's right. Okay. Now, now I noticed my mistake. I I last minute changed Amara to two uh, castle lands, and I must have actually resubmitted the old one. So that's the mistake. I think those two cards are not good for what it's worth, and they should probably be uh, two more lands. But we'll we'll live. I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. On my You're side, still going to mulligan. Yeah. I'm going to keep. And <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. All right, what do you got? As I said before the break, this is Azorius Blink uh, using Baron, Talarian Archmage, and Namim. Uh, I forgot its name. I read it during the break, and then I screwed it up again. Yes. Niambi. Okay. Esteemed Speaker. So those two cards not only go well with each other, they go well with all of these cheap creatures with ETB effects. I've got some Yorians just to make Corey jealous. Yes. And I'll, you know, also be awesome in my deck. Yeah. Uh, but not in your companion slot, huh? No. I wanted to just draw the new cards and yeah. test those out more. I'm pretty sure eventually, like, you know, this deck should be built as a Yorian deck. Maybe. I'm not even is sure it, any deck should be built as a Yorian deck. But trust me, I'm going to try next round. But. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you add, like, you know, six or seven lands. We, you know, there, there's probably five cards that you... Five slots that can be taken up by making things into four ofs yeah. that aren't in the 60-card list. Then play, like, four Omen of the Sea, and, you're, you're like, you're basically there. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not too hard to just add 20 cards. I yeah. built an awesome, uh, a little foreshadowing to my third deck. This is the first deck that I think I is built in with just competitive aspects in mind. Like, I already think Bant Ramp decks are good. Now I'm getting, you know, functional upgrades um, and stuff like that. I'm playing Solemn Simulac. Akram, Ugin, um, and then just, you know, Uros, good cards that are, are making an impact right now. Um, uh, that's going to be in my third round. And I completely forgot what my point was when I started this. So <laughs> I know I had something to say about that deck, but it completely lost me. So it's good. It's good. 
It's probably better than my third deck. Good deck equals good <laughs> to some to sum up that point that I went nowhere with. So uh, yeah, let's uh, start playing magic there. <laughs> oh god, it's the black eye. I think it's going to uh, going to my brain here. I think. <laughs> Are you going to mulligan to start off round number two? I can already tell that Director Kyle would say keep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm going to keep this hand. Okay. I'm not excited by it. <laughs> Wait, is you, this you a have direct... the best two drop ever there, Ross. Come on. Is this a Director Kyle deck as well? Uh, it's a, it's a Fibblethip deck, so. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Yeah. I think I can keep this. I will scry. Okay. Leave that land on top. Pass the turn. Okay. This hand isn't excellent or anything, but it's, it's interesting. Is that Fibble Fib in play, or what, what do you got going on there? It'll be there next turn. Don't worry. <laughs> Scry. Um, I think I want to keep this on top. So, yeah, I'll pass to you. Okay. Fibble Fib, draw a card. Okay. You can go. All right. Um, we have our Conclave Mentor. Pass to you. The card that I'm building uh, this deck around, essentially. Uh, Baron, bounce the mentor. Oh, attack for one. Sad panda. Okay. 19, you can go. Yeah, and these kind of tempo swings are definitely bad for me. So I hope uh, you know there's not too many of them in in my future. Um, so we're gonna replay it and play a temple scry. Do we want this as well? Let me just do some quick math. Um, yeah, I'll keep it. Attack for two. I could block if I think you're going to blink, but I hope that's not the case, so I'm going to take it. You go to 17. Yep. Uh, pass the turn. Hooray! <laughs> okay. Um, now we got a ton of options. Um, but what is the best? I don't know what kind of removal you run in that deck, but it's probably smart to just go with Garrick to start. Mystical Dispute. <laughs> okay, okay, that makes sense. Uh, Beatdowns. I'm at 18. Here go. Attack for three. Okay, I'll take it. You're at 14. Yep. You can go. Okay. Let's go with... I want to make sure I can get some spells down here. So let's start with Conclave Mentor. Mystical Dispute. <laughs> okay, pretty good. Uh, then I'll play a Wildwood Scourge for one. This is that Hydra card where whenever one or more counters we put on another non-Hydra creature, put a 1-1 one -one counter on yeah. this. So it's, it's going to get two, two counters, um, and then I'll attack. Okay, so I'm going to take two. So I'm at 16. Yep, your turn. I just wanted to double spell there just in case you had another dispute, which you did. Uh, attack for two. I'll go to 12. 12 to 16. I'm just trying to get my synergy, so I don't really want to trade with this quite yet. I will go to 14 and play Elite Guard Mage, go to 17. Okay. Draw a card. Okay. I'm at 17, you're 12. You can go. This is going to be a key turn. What can Corey do? This is All right. A good amount of mana, good amount of cards. I'm going to go with Quatly Raptor. Okay, so that's going to go up to four counters. Yep. Locks it on? I don't even... The, the amount of counters I'm getting here, I just have no idea. <laughs> so these are going to get two. These are going to get two, and then I think and this gets a total... So this gets two from the locks it on, yeah. and then it should get... One or more creatures are put on put another... A plus one plus one counter. So this is going to get one for each of these, which means two for each of these, so four more. Wow. 
Are we sure? Whenever one or more counters oh. are put on a hydro, put a one-one counter. It's just on put one. I think it's one or more. Are put on a non. So yeah, does it trigger for both of these or just once? I don't know. Director Rob, we need help. I get it's one instance. So of like each counters. each each trigger to put a counter on would then trick like get another counter. Yeah, it's right? two or four counters, and yeah. I, so I what don't it's, know. so I think what it's saying is if you put like if you put five counters on at once, it would still only get one more. Yeah, but, but it, we have two creatures. That's the only thing. That yeah, I, I know if I put counters at yeah, the same no, time no. is the thing. So because they're both getting at the same time, is it only one instance of the Wildwood Scourge trigger, or does it because it's two separate creatures, does it create two separate Wildwood Scourge? I believe it's two separate triggers. I'm with you. I think it's because it says another non-hider creature. That was my initial impression. Too. Yeah. Okay, here go. That's huge. Oh, sorry. This has vigilance. I should have attacked first. Or wait, I no, played you it. just played yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I have a 10-10. No big deal. Oh, man. Well, I'm in love already. <laughs> this is awesome. This is everything I want to be doing. We can honestly, if we were taken out of the list, could play some Conclave Tribunals, if you remember that one. Uh, I'm going to Petty Theft the Loxodon. Okay. So we we got to play a tempo game here. Makes sense. Try to win this game. Uh, attack for five. Okay. Two to seven. seven. Yep. And then I will play a. Charming Prince, okay. Blink the Baron. Okay. Baron comes back, and which of these do creatures do I want to bounce? Probably the 10 10. Probably a good call. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. All right. That was a great turn on your part. And now it's going to be hard for Corey to even like redeploy the lock spot. Oh, yeah. That card's not getting out of my hand. But I nope. am going to go... Normally you would think bouncing a creature with an ETB ability, not something you want to do. Yeah. So I'm going to make a 1-1, one, one, which then gets Comes to a two, be a 2-2. Two, two. Two. And then a Hlotley Raptor, bang, bang, and that gets plus... Oh, yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, so it's now it's an 8-8 eight, eight again. And I'll attack with these two for 12. The Vigilance on Watley Raptor is just as relevant as the ability right now, I feel. Vigilance is what I need. Okay, I'm going to block one of them with the Charming Prince and go to 11. Uh, six, yep, okay, so 11 to 7, right? Yep. Temple. Don't need an Amara. That card just shouldn't be in the deck anyways. So, yeah. all right, you pass to you. three in hand, yep. one of which One's is... One's a on. Uh, <laughs> did you need a land? <laughs> I did, and I drew a temple. Oh, welcome to the club. <laughs> That's been the theme today on Versus Live. <laughs> uh, temple of E and the Temple of M all really are just temples of T, temples of tilt. <laughs> um, temple of plenty is just temples of plenty of tilt. I mean, they're all just tilt. Exactly 14, of course. <laughs> Three in hand? I have three, yep. Okay, well, let's bottom that. I don't think it does anything. Okay. Get in for two. Five. Now you are set up to, if you can brazen borrower, um, to kill me with two blockers on my biggest okay. things. Pass Six, the turn. Seven, eight. Oh, that's what you're doing, I guess, huh? So I have to make sure I stop that because that just kills yeah, me. You were dead on board. Yeah. What can you do about it? Um, we're gonna find out. <laughs> uh, boss tree would be good enough. Yeah. Right? Because I get four attackers, right? Yeah, so I would be able to block here, here, and this is eight plus four is 12. Well, lucky for me, I have that. <laughs> now, the question is, do I want to play anything else? Yeah, we'll play Bossery and then uh, negative two. 
Because putting the counter, does it only gives a Huatli Raptor plus two. Uh, thank you. 1-1 uh, one, one soldiers. Okay. Um, I will declare attacks. Yep. Get in there with everything. Get four attackers coming in. Okay. I will uh, block Fibble Fizzle here. Okay. Uh, well, I guess before blocks. Yeah. Either Gust Huatley's Raptor. The big one? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think. Doesn't truly matter that much. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it on top. Four. Oh, you're at five. I screwed this up. Thought I had one more damage somehow. Um, I know. I'm at 11, yeah. 11 to 5. Oh, hold on then. I, I thought I, I could let you attack first. I've, okay. got, I've got to do all this before you attack, and it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be... Double Aether Gust? Yeah, it's two Gusts on... Uh, definitely the big Vigilancer, and then uh, also this thing, and I'll... Doesn't matter the order. I'm gonna put this on top. Yeah, this yeah. on bottom. So, okay. uh, so do you still want to attack both? Oh, oh, because you're doing it before. Yeah, the yeah, Amber exactly. Just come. Yeah. For some reason, I thought I could get away with only blocking one thing yeah. and double gusting the two raptors, and then and then I'd have lethal somehow. Yeah. But I just had one fewer creature than I thought. I definitely still just have to do that to get this ability okay. right now. I think. And so then I will. Double block the raptor, I think. Okay, we'll kill your 2-2. Two, two. And then I take 8, brings yep. me to 3. Yep, and then I'll uh, play a 2-2. Two, two. Here you go. Okay, that was a good draw. Um, so that's only going to be 3. You have a Loxodon X in hand. Yep. And... Yeah, let's uh, play Castle. Scry two. Elite Guard Mage, okay. go to six. Draw a card. Yep. And attack you for two. And I'm down to three. And then pass the turn. All right. Do you have another piece of interaction? Yes, I hope not. Um, all right. I'll attempt to put a counter here. Yep. Okay, so two counters here, two counters here. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I forgot this is going to get a second counter. Yep. Um, so I have to respond to this. Yeah, so... I, um, no, but you have the... Oh, I'm at six. I don't know. I thought you were at three. <laughs> yeah, God, yeah. This game is getting me all... all You're all flazzered. All, all flummoxed. Um... So, yeah, that's all fine. Okay. Uh, Quat layer Raptor? That is still fine. Or wait a minute. Now I actually can think about something else, because if I don't do this, I can play Quat Raptor first, proliferate the Planeswalker, and then attack for more. You get two more 1-1s. One Four more. Oh, non-tokens. Yeah, uh, yeah, it doesn't mm -hmm. count tokens. I think getting the counters is better, but... It all depends, because, I mean, the only thing you can really have is a Brazen Bar or an Aether Gust. What is the best way to play around those? Um, so, yeah, we're still... We're still just... Let me let me double-think this. I'm debating if I want to put a counter here. If you Aether Gust this or bounce it... Um, and then I make one extra token. That that does not do anything. Yeah, I think I have to do this, and I think I'm just dead to it. So we'll go like this. Yep. And uh, Raptor. Yep. Okay, so four, six, six, six. And then four more here. And then... I already gave you the one on there. 
is put on a non hydra creature. Okay, so yeah. it doesn't trigger the boss no. Okay, and then yeah, declare tax. But I'm sure you got me. Yeah, I have the the borrower. Yeah, so, so I get to that. I get to block this with the guard mage. Block one of these. Bounce the other one. Take five. Go to one. How do you take five? Bounce, bounce this. Take five from this. Block here. Okay. Well, which one are you bouncing? Huh? Which are, one you, are you bouncing? attacking? Yeah, I'm attacking with everything. Do you decide you have a pump spell? Maybe. Um. I mean. Like a pump spell and an unblock thing kills me. Is there something I'm not thinking about? Well, I'm just saying how this uh, <laughs> how this is working. Um, I don't know. I'll just like bounce this. Do you have a okay. trample? No, no, I do not. Um, yeah, you take five exactly, huh? Yeah, and I go to one and attack you for four. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. Yep, you win. I just had two locks on. That was a crazy game. Yeah, good game, good so game. So many uh, just crazy token synergies. And I think if you just, you know, bounce Conclave, you could have made it a little less close, right? You bounce Conclave with Vossary. Yeah, I was deck. worried about a Garrick, though, uh, yeah. as a follow-up. Like, yeah. And I wanted to make sure I could bounce that. So I just wanted to make sure I could beat that if that's what you had. Yeah. And otherwise, wait, maybe I could beat a Garrick depending on how you plus. Yeah. I'm not sure if I could have because you just got to plus on the other 1-1. One, one, mm -hmm. And then I don't have the clean block with the Guard Mage. So I think I was just dead to a Garrick at that point. Yep. So I should probably just bounce. And I'm like, maybe I beat something else. I did not I, I did not expect main deck uh, Mystical Dispute. So I actually, the game was lost on turn four by me. I, I could have just double creatured into your dispute turn instead of play Garrick. And if, if I would have known you had counters or had the possibility of counters, I just did not think a blink deck, you know, would have main deck disputes, so I didn't play around it. Yeah. But if I just play around and put two creatures, you're forced to dispute one, I still get to affect the board. And then eventually the shield is gonna be open for Garrick, and I think I win that game easily. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. I passed with dispute and borrower in hand, so like I could, I could do either or. And yeah. But you can do both, and that's the important thing. Because if I play two spells, then as long as you don't deal with both of them, yeah. then it would have been something like, you know, the one-one. Uh, yeah, just Hydra thing. anything that turn. That Hydra thing looks insane, though. That card in a creature matchup. I mean, the bounce matchup. Maybe it's not going to be as effective here since you have well, jump blockers. And I, stuff, I was just but... forced to bounce it every turn. Yeah, like, it just got so problematic because I don't really have a way to take Mentor off the battlefield. Like eventually, it sticks. And just think of that pairing with Garrick, Travel. Yeah. <laughs> So it's going to be something I really have to go out of my way yeah. to not die to, and that's yeah. still going to be impactful, even if I have efficient answers to it. Yeah. And I drew almost every piece of interaction in my deck. Yeah, At yeah. least the instant speed stuff. Like, I, yeah. I have two Aether Gusts, two Mystical Disputes, and three Brazen Bars main. <laughs> nice, I drew nice. two of each. Yeah. And, and I drew one Baron and a Charming Prince. Yeah. So. Regardless, I may have lost that game, but just seeing how the deck interacts, I am so excited for New Standard to play this deck. Like, I don't know how it's going to pair up against Team of Reclamation and stuff, but you think about it, this deck is hitting hard, you know? Yeah. And I mean, you played that... You played the Loxodon on turn five, I think, but that was after I countered the Garrick. Like, yeah. maybe you could have done that on, on turn four, and then you're just killing them on turn five. And Yeah, turn four, I didn't have any one drop, so it would have just been with the one creature I had in play, yeah. but but still, you know? Definitely put in some work. Yeah, it was definitely pretty sweet. Um, Yeah, I think I can keep this hand. It's a little risky, but... I will keep as well. All right, do we want to... This is a little awkward, but we'll live. <laughs> Um, Temple Garden, go. Uh, a Temple of Enlightenment. And do I want to keep this? I don't think so. I think I want to get towards my more impactful cards. Yeah. And anybody who's looking at the deck list here, probably thinking the same thing I was thinking when I started this, that there are too few of lands. That's because there is. I must have had a typo on my sheet. Should not be 20 lands. We should definitely be playing more, and I, it is probably going to come to bite me. But all right, this actually should be a land. So <laughs> here you go. But it's decent here. Yeah, it's definitely not bad. White Soldier Lifelink Tokens. Wow, you're good. You even had those. I thought for sure you'd forget them, Rob. Can't forget the Jerry's. Yeah, yeah. Jerry lives on forever here at Versus Live. Okay, I will uh, scry two. Okay. That's real charming of you. God. I see what you did there. Thank you. Thank you. Charming Prince is a card that's just like so close to being awesome, but it's just like fills its it, it, its niche roles. Uh, but I do still love that card. No, I think I have to bottom both. Done? Yeah. Uh, that was not a great draw. I'll attack, make a token. I'll block. Okay. 
Uh, mentor, Mr. Land Drop, past you. This should be a land, which is even more of a tilt, because then our hand is a beautiful. Still not the worst, but. Um, hmm. Maybe I just want to throw this into the fire. Okay. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Uh, Teferi bounce the token. Okay. Draw a card. Okay. And pass the turn. Mm. Take two. Mine's the land. You're at 18. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll kill Teferi. Conclave Mentor, 3-3 three, three Stone Serpent. Your go. Stole Mentor every game. That's no, I've drawn two every game, okay? Get it right. That's what uh, my deck does, man. I gotta, I gotta do it. God. <laughs> this deck is so sick. I am so excited for... Uh, um, the streamer showdown where they allow us all to play the day early. I will be starting with green white. This. <laughs> this deck is awesome. Okay, bounce a mentor. Okay. Scry. Okay. Bottom that. Okay. Pass the turn. Um. Not a great draw by any means. Um, I think you're gonna struggle with Stone Coil Serpent a decent amount, so I probably just wanna lean into that card. So I'm, I'm debating between the Mentor we know about and Whatley Raptor here and Watley does just seem better right now. Getting the Stone Coil Serpent up, hitting you for five, forcing you to deal with that. All right, we're gonna do that. Get two counters on this. This Teferi and this at you. Or do I even care about Teferi? Yeah, we'll still kill Teferi, why not? Yeah, I, I don't think I necessarily should have to, but okay. you know, if for some reason you shatter the sky, that's a blowout, but. So I'm at 15. And I'm at 18, yep. I wouldn't imagine your blink deck has shatter the sky, but. You can go. I got uh -huh. incredibly punished for bottoming one of the cards I bottomed. It would have been really, <laughs> okay. really good the way this game played out. Okay. Um. Declare tags? Yep. Tag with everything. Uh, go to six. Okay. Um. Conclave Mentor? Yep. One, one, uh, Wildwood Scourge? Yep. Okay, so that gets three counters and past you. End of turn, bounce the serpent, play borrower. Okay. Fibble fib. Okay. Draw a card. Charming Prince gain three life. Okay. Gain nine. Yep. Attack for three. I will take it. Go to 15. Yep. Pass turn. All right, so I gotta assume a Gust or another Brazy Bee. Um, all right, I'm gonna play a 1-1 one, one Stone Coil Serpent. Yep. All right, so I'll get three counters on this. Yep. Uh, unbreakable formation. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I honestly don't know how many counters I'm gonna I mean, get. I have this. the bounce for this, but I'm. But let, let's nice. just think how much it would be though, like because. So it's getting three from the formation itself, and then six, nine, twelve, 12 15. fifteen. Yeah, so it's it's a twenty-one, twenty-one. What the heck? Yeah. Yeah, I have that ECD to give a trip, but you never played a three or four mana card. I have my Garrick. You never needed to. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to uh, be that's gonna be something you'll have to side out for sure. I just don't have enough. Huh? I mean, you have, you have Venery, Loxodon, Bossery, and Garrick. Sure. I th I, I, but I they like... both gain value when I play them, so I feel like it's it's like, I mean, they're probably not terrible. But yeah, 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 yeah. Probably but, not insane. And I, like, I only have two, so it's not, I think that's fine. But I, I bought yeah. them to Baron early in the game because I had Teferi already, mm. and it just didn't seem... Like I had Teferi and like just other and Brazen Borrower. Okay. So I was like, I have a bunch of that effect and stuff to do with my man on those turns. I want to get to like Yori in something big. Yeah. But then I drew like Charming Princes and you had all the stuff I needed to bounce and keep rebouncing. Yeah. That having that Baron would have been super helpful. Yeah. And it also probably would have stopped some attacks because you wouldn't have wanted to trade away your mentors. Yep. Uh so the Baron would have been awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I just put it on the bottom because I didn't think it would be. It was a Turns very, out very Mana long. War is uh, still good in 2020, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're a Blink deck, sure. Yes, absolutely. Okay, everyone, well, uh, I don't even care if I lose this next game. I'm already <laughs> in love with this deck, but we're going to see what we have in the sideboard here, and we'll be right back with sideboarding with uh, Celestia tokens, I guess, <laughs> up against uh, Azorius Flash. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome back to Versus Live, where we are sideboarding in our matchup between Azorius, Blink, and Selesnia counters. On my side, Mystical Disputes come out. Teferi, weak in an aggressive matchup, so we're trimming on those. We got some sweepers and time wipe. Got a third copy of Ether Gust. Heliod's intervention it looks <laughs> a little awkward, but Corey mentioned it. Stone Coil Serpent is tough for me to deal with. It really so is. I yeah. bring this in to deal with Stone Coil Serpent. Yeah. Stone, and, uh, Stone Coil Serpent is like everything this deck. It's just the perfect card in this deck. You know, I mean, it's that perfect. On turn three, it's easy. It's either good on turn one to just get a one one, and then eventually it's going to gain more value over time, or it's really good on that turn three where you just go like two drop stone coil when it's like a three three for one mana. Um, the one problem with uh, the other one drop that's not actually a one drop, um, you know, the one with the X counter, the hydro yeah. thing that's been getting crazy. It is a two drop because on one it's a zero zero and it dies. Um, so it doesn't have that versatility, even though that card is just insane so far that we've noticed in this deck. But uh, um, the one drop definitely fills the space a lot more. Now we have Pelt Collectors as well. So Pelt Collector and Stone Serpent are the one drops, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and if you have those, it's just going to be like Gruul is. You know, when you have Pelt Collector, when you start, it's so much better. But yeah. Pelt um, Collector is just yeah. a card that has shown up so much in multiple different formats. You yeah. Know, we've seen it in Is It in Soul and Azorius in Soul and Pioneer. Yeah. Uh, it just... It fills so many synergistic roles and is resilient to Teferi, resilient to a lot of removal, you know, Abruptica and Pioneer, yeah. for example, uh, Deafening Clarion, uh, and, you know, serves as this extra one drop that a lot of decks want. You know, your deck plays off the counter theme, works really well. Yep. And then a late game, you draw and you just cast them as five fives and six sixes. Card is kind of the sleeper hit from Throne of Eldraine. I'm sorry, are you saying Pelt Collector or are you talking Stone Cold Stone Cold Serpent? Okay, I think you might have said Pelt Collector. No, so did I? I yeah. yeah, but I agree. Stone Cold Serpent has just really been getting a lot of attention. And there's also another built-in synergy that it's not for this matchup, but just gem raisers out of the board. This is going to yeah. be an insanely good gem raiser deck. Yeah, you you have insane. You know, yeah, you have creatures that are small that are getting counters. Now you're up to a four four. You're getting like full value out of the mutate. Yep. Uh, yep. The bodies fusing together. So and, one one stone coil serpent into uh, you know any two drop into gem raiser on that. And now when you locks it on or whenever you bossery cat this, it's getting double counters still and stuff. Like I I think it's going to be an awesome gem raiser deck. Um. Oh yeah. And right. my sideboarding. I'm taking out scavenging news. One growth chamber guardian. Uh. This is another cute one that we haven't seen a lot of play. But you think about this into bossery cat. Put a counter on it. You go search up another one. You know. So there's a lot of synergies with the tokens in this card too. Um. So I thought it was worth trying. But bringing in the anti blue card. Uh. Going to be pretty standard. Uh. In these green base beatdown decks. Yeah. Another, I'd be shocked uh, if difficult they card for me to yeah. deal with. Yeah. And a difficult card for me to cast now that I'm not playing the adequate amount of lands. But you know what? We'll get lucky. Yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure I'm all going to five. Well, yeah, exactly. I, I'm glad you're being a, a realist on this. So. <laughs> I always am. All right. We got any questions there, Rob? Yeah, Hestaeus wants to know, what do you think about playing Bosri Lieutenants in your deck? I think it's too expensive in a Loxodon deck. 
Um, I think it's an interesting card, but I think you have to choose between that and Garrick. And not only did I want to try Garrick because I haven't tried the Lieutenant, I think Garrick is miles ahead a better card, especially with that Hydra yeah. that gets out of hand, you know? Still provides resilience to sweepers, you yeah. know, maybe not quite as good in that role, but still yeah. does it, and it lets you push those giant creatures through, lets yeah. you go tall as well as wide. And yeah. whenever you get to do both of those things at the same time, mm -hmm. it's really difficult to stop because you need yeah. it's two different types of reaction from your opponent that it requires. Yeah. Like, for instance, during quarantine, I'm only going wide. I'm not going tall, so it's not a good <laughs> combo. But uh, <laughs> if I were to be getting taller, it would be great. <laughs> All right. How's your head? The time is long gone for us to get taller, Corey. We're just getting shorter. <laughs> I know. Once, gravi you, once you're like 25, you just start. Gravity starts fine. to take, uh, take hold, huh? Yeah, that sounds great. I can't wait. Uh, my hand is okay, but it, it's a keep. Yeah, my hand's a keep. Why not? We can find a two drop off this temple. Ooh, that is not a two drop, but it's a good <laughs> card, and so I'm going to keep it. Okay. Um, decent card here, but I'd like to get my temple in play. Uh, we'll keep that on top. Pass to you. Okay. How fountain go? All right. I got a good two drop here, a card that should be a land, but you know what? It's an Amara. Pass to you. Okay, well, I have a Teferi Bouncy Ramara. Oh, that's less cool. I'll draw a card. Okay. You're up. Um, yeah, not a great play here. Yeah, we're just going to play another Amara and a Temple and pass to you. I think I'll keep that on. Yeah, I'll keep that on top. Okay, let's uh, plus the Teferi okay. and play an Elite Guard Mage. Game three, draw a card. That's what I was afraid of. I'm at 23. All right. You can go. Something that I could not attack in to Teferi is not what I wanted to see. Um, but I'll take two and play a Shifting. Probably what you didn't want to see. See so you at 18. Here we go. Uh, I will shock to 21. Okay. Attack you for two. Uh, I will go to 16. 16. And plus to fairy. And I could wait here, but it just wouldn't make any sense with the shifting ceratops that the fairy's going to die. So I'm just going to time wipe now so you can't unbreakable formation. Mm. Bounce my guard mage. Can't really do that with the fairy in play, anyways, but still. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you, you're not going to play a creature before you attack. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's There's no that. real creature that I'd have haste and attack with. <laughs> okay. Your go. <laughs> I take two for that. Not a fourteen. Well, that's the card I was afraid of you having, but yeah, I think uh, um, not the worst that could have happened for me. Well, I screwed that up. <laughs> yeah, you did. Not that the Teferi was going to... I guess it, it just cost me a card, basically. Basically, yeah. And um, maybe a bounce of something, but yeah, you wouldn't have been yeah, able you, to bounce. You would, have, you would have just played Shifting Ceratops, you know, yep. go after combat. Mm -hmm. I would have seen the writing on the wall. and uh, But that card could be relevant. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to gain three and draw a card. I'm at 24. Okay. Okay, we drew our land six. That's good. Then I'll play Fibblethip and draw a card. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. All right. So we got 24 to 14. Sounds right. Um, <clears throat> your hand is slightly awkward right now. Um, I guess we'll start with a scry. Don't want another Temple of Tea, a fourth. Uh, all right, we'll get in there. 19. <clears throat> Hand is very awkward. You got four in hand or five? Yeah, four. Um, I think I just play the the best card and max it out. We'll play five five. Here you go. Hmm. It's a really strange play from Corey because like that card just fits with your curve and you have so many other cards in hand. Yeah. 
I don't like you're trying to like bait me into a sweeper or something. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a good play, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you after the game, it, my hand is a little interesting. Yeah, well, I have a pretty scripted turn. I drew land seven, which is great. So I'll go to 22, draw okay. a card, and then I will play a Baron and bounce the Serpent. Mm, that's not what I wanted to see. And attack for three. And I'm at 14, right? Yes. Now 11? Yep, so it's 22 to 11 after my attack. All right. And I will pass the turn, so. Might be time to have to leave the old shifty back. Maybe not quite yet. Um, still think I want to try to get you dead here. But I'm scared. <laughs> You're not doing a great job of it. I have more life than when I started. Uh, I know. I know. Okay. Now I've lost. So I'll go to 17. <laughs> All right. Two, three, three. Here we go. That's good. Yes, that's uh, <laughs> that's quite good. Yeah. All right, I'm dead. <laughs> I had uh, three Wildwood Scourges in hand, <laughs> and I wanted to like get them into play because you know when I put these counters yeah. on, it would be insane. But, but yeah, they just I, don't I, block well against. Yeah, what I had. four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting you to four. Yeah, I've you got have gas. Yeah. Bar or Gust ECD in hand, at, and Yorian. Dang it! Dang it! Okay, all right, I, I was defeated. Yeah. But I mean, I, I started my hand with like this and three land. I'm like, yeah, it's got to be good. But um, and even with you horrifically play, misplaying yeah. time wipe there, I, I crossed myself a card, but I drew land six and then drew land seven, which yeah. is key. And that's what I needed to be able to deploy my hand because I just drew so many extra cards. And the thing that I, and I also made a judgment call that bit me in the butt is I, I could have played turn one Stone Cold Serpent. Um, you know, so you wouldn't have had your good Teferi turn. And that's the thing. Against me, Teferi on the play is actually good as long as I don't have the Serpent itself or yeah. Pelt Collector yeah. into something. Don't have a one drop. Exactly. Um, and, yeah, and it, it just ended up being really good. Put me on the back foot the whole time. Maybe I just had to be more conservative with my Shifting Ceratops. Uh, and I mean, almost assuredly. But yeah. yeah. No, ha had you done that, then, like, uh, you know, you would have lost the Serpent to the Time Wipe, but I would yeah. have also lost a creature because I would have been forced to play Baron into Elite Garden Age and then lose one to the Time Wipe as well. Yeah. So you would have effectively traded that Stone Call Serpent for a creature of mine, yeah. which, as it turns out, would have been a good trade because yeah. you just lost it in a two-for-one. That's uh, true. And it never really got to, it never got to attack or block, so. Yeah. And I mean, we did notice one problem with this deck for sure that's going to be a problem is just Wrath Effects. Wrath yeah. Effects are going to be good, and I'm sure there's going to be some ways to get around that. I mean, there's Unbreakable and you stuff. Have unbreakable but... Formation and multiple Planeswalkers. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like you're stone cold to them. It's unfortunate, uh, Boss Cat, once you get Wrath, it also shuts the Planeswalker off pretty effectively. Yeah. You know, well, I you mean, need, you need like yeah. haste threats, which you don't really have. And shifting Ceratops, but yeah, yeah you know. Word, yeah. yeah. And I mean, you definitely bring that in against Wrath. So it'll be interesting to see the development of this. I'm interested. I think it looks really cool. Yeah, the, the, Flash strategy is always cool. Looks pretty decent as well. Yeah, and Baron in particular looked very good. Looked awesome. Um, yeah. You know, it was just a mana war. I never bounced a Planeswalker with it, yeah. which is, is a really, really great addition because you, uh, unlike a lot of the recent mana war effects like Reflector Mage, mm -hmm. you can bounce your own things. Yeah. So you can bounce your, if you have Narset or Teferi, you can bounce to reset them okay. on your own side. Uh, so that can end with, you know, all the ETB effects. I could bounce an Elite Guard Mage maybe after attacks and get yeah. another blocker and some life in a tight race. So the card has a lot of synergy with the deck just because you can target both sides. Or, you know, playing a Yorian every single turn for the rest of the game yeah. is probably Obviously, pretty good. You know, yeah, bounce your own Yorian, Yorian yep. when Yorian blinks it out. That, that's insane. We, we did not get yeah. to see Niambi. This isn't really the matchup for it because yeah. it, it's, uh, it's rough for me to be able to bounce my own creature because I need to be on the battlefield and playing this yeah. tempo game against you. Yeah, sometimes I'll just be able to like bounce a bear and replay, bounce something on your side, uh, and then get some get two life out of it and get the bear and trigger. Uh, the, like plays like that are really nice on turn five. For what it's worth, I don't think that's going to be a good card. I think just it, a standard's too powerful right now, and curving out is so good that tempoing yourself out is usually not great in a tempo deck because that's yeah. what you lean on. But it's just a good body too, you know. But yeah. I, no, it's yeah. still just going to come down on turn two, like trade yeah. against an aggressive deck, and it, where it's going to shine is against you know more interactive decks where you can yeah. use it to counter a removal spell uh, and, and you know get value that way. Also, like that secondary ability. 
you know, if you bounce a Fibble Thip, then you can pitch it and draw two cards, hmm. uh, you know, or, or pitch extra copies of a Baron that you don't need. Yeah. Uh, so you've got a good number of legends in the deck, you know, extra Teferis and stuff like that. So that second ability should come up. But it just, it just, I feel like in my brain, I see that card and I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Pinch their cheeks, you know? And then I see the Mana Work card and I'm like, I'm terrified of that card. Yeah. I'm, I'm terrified <laughs> of that, you know? And that just kind of says it all for me that yeah. like what the dynamic of the, the deck is going to be. But yeah, this is yeah. definitely the, uh, the less value valuable of the two cards. Yeah, Baron yeah. Is, is the real gain, and you saw it play out in those games. Yeah. You know, the game I bottomed in, I got run over, and it would have been great. And yeah. I, it's a complete mistake for me to do that. Yeah, uh, so so bottom line, I think I like both of these decks. They both like really excite me, just the, the kind of style of play I like. I love these yeah. blink, build your board, Yorian <laughs> strategies, like everyone knows, but also these tokens, I think, I th or this deck has a, a very high ceiling, and I do not think by any means that this is built correctly, and it's for sure wrong with the land base, but like, I, I think I think that deck has the hopes to be something really good. Yeah, you know, yeah. we've been talking that we've been a little disappointed by the cards that we've seen and the decks that we've played over the first you know week, week and a half or so. Yeah. But today, the new cards are looking really good. Yeah, they you are. Know, uh, the Gar Garrick's good. The Garrick's Harbinger. The Dragon. Uh, Terror of the Keep. Terror of the Peaks, yeah. Terror of the Peaks, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, both of the, the Conclave Mentor. You know, we know the power of Winding Constrictor yeah. and Hardened Skills. That's yeah. proven. It's but pretty much a reprint, just in a different yeah. color. Yeah. The key is that it has the synergies around it. You yeah. know, it has two good one-drops that play really well with the deck. That's awesome. And two one-drops that are both playable with green mana. So mm. that you can slant your mana base and actually be consistent yep uh is really nice you know all the synergy with all those planeswalkers so the car the core 21 cards are really showing out today i love yeah it. and and something that we touched on really early is going to be my next deck that we have seen already be good and that's ugin you know ugin we only played on one deck and it's not because we think the card's going <laughs> to be bad but it's like okay we're not just going to play all ugin ramp decks but uh, this next deck i'm playing a deck that i just generally think is going to be very competitive it's it's slight alterations to the Bant Ramp decks or Bant Control decks that we are seeing now, um, but just with some good upgrades, Solemn Simulacrum as well as Ugin is going to be in my Bant deck. And, what about uh, you? My deck is interesting. Okay. I don't know how it's going to work. Okay. It could work really, really, really well. Okay. It could also work not well at all. Okay, I'll leave the, the marbles over high. there until you win this next but round then. All I'm going to say is that it has four copies of Creeping Chill in it. And that should give you some idea of what I'm doing. Oh yeah, yeah. So we'll see if Ross is going to be getting super chilly next round, or if he's, or if his marble spot is going to remain chilled for uh, for another we'll week. See who so. gets to make the bad Arnold Schwarzenegger joke. Yes, yes. So we will be right back. You get to the job, and then we'll be right back here on Versus Live after five minutes. <laughs> 